On today's episode, we've got new updates on the Tesla Mega Pack battery. The Tesla Semi is moving even closer to delivery. The price of full self driving is going up. The Starbase Mechazilla flexes for the first time. The Model S Plaid gets even faster, and Nikola fail in their attempt to sue Tesla. So let's get going. We've got a very interesting new rumor coming from Drive Tesla Canada, who are reporting that a new extra large version of the Tesla Megapack energy storage unit is set to be announced in the first quarter of 2022. This new version of the Megapack would be built at Lathrop California Mega Factory that is currently under construction. Drive Tesla reported that their anonymous source was present for an all hands Tesla energy division meeting held in late December of 2021. According to the report, Tesla's Megapack production capacity is set to reach 20 gigawatt hours by the end of 2022 and expand to a full capacity of 50 gigawatt hours by 2023. If Tesla is able to achieve that rate and sell every single unit it produces, that will equate to about $22 billion in revenue based on today's Megapack pricing. But today's Megapack likely won't be the product that Tesla is selling in 2023. We also see from the report that a version two of the grid scale battery is in the works. Tesla will be introducing a larger Megapack known as MP2XL24 in limited quantities as early as this quarter. An even larger Megapack MP2XL33 will then be introduced at a later date, but as of yet, does not have a timeline for production. Again, according to an anonymous source, not an official Tesla release. Even though Megapack XL will have a much larger footprint and offer more storage, the source says it will actually be cheaper to produce than the current MP1 system, thanks to the use of CATL prismatic LFP cells. These are the same iron-based cells that is currently being used in the Model 3 with rear-wheel drive. Speaking of the Megapack system, Tesla has released an official video showing off their newest grid-scale energy storage project in Angleton, Texas. This 200 megawatt hour facility holds 81 Megapack units that Tesla states will provide greater outage protection while reducing the community's reliance on fossil fuels by adding sustainable backup support to the grid. This is one of Tesla's biggest energy storage projects so far, and it is very clearly being pitched to the people of Texas as a way to prevent blackouts like the deadly power failure in February 2021. The basic idea of these grid scale batteries is that they can pump extra capacity into the grid at peak use times. So if the temperature suddenly drops and everyone cranks up their furnace, then that can lead to more demand for electricity than the power plants can supply. And thus electricity stops flowing entirely. Tesla batteries can fix this. And with enough batteries in combination with a robust solar and wind generation system, we can eventually start to eliminate the need for traditional power plants entirely. We've got a couple of developments on the Tesla Semi to catch up on. Firstly, we know that at least two more brand new semis have been spotted on site at Giga Nevada already in 2022, which would suggest that the low volume production phase is well underway. And that's got speculation going that 15 units of the Tesla Semi will be delivered to their first customer, PepsiCo, before the end of this month. And most recently, some new activity has been spotted around the semi mega chargers at Giga Nevada. These are the dedicated charging infrastructure for the semi and are speculated to have a power output of one megawatt or more, which could add 400 miles of range to the electric transport truck in just 30 minutes. In new images, it looks like Tesla might be developing a mobile mega charger system to accommodate the early adoption of the semi truck. An anonymous source provided images to Tesla Roddy that show flatbed trailers next to the mega charger station that are loaded with power pack batteries and urban charging stalls. 
the report hinted at the potential for a portable charging system that would accommodate the semi, which makes sense. It's going to take a while for Tesla to build up a nationwide grid of these mega charger stations. Companies that purchase semi fleets like Pepsi are having the mega chargers installed at their distribution centers, but the trucks are going to need to recharge somewhere else out in the world. And for right now, there is no infrastructure in place for that. A mobile mega charger built of a flatbed would solve that problem in the meantime. The charging station can be strategically placed along whichever trucking route the Tesla happens to be operating on. If the route changes, the location of the charger can change with it. It's not ideal, but we are talking about the very early stages of a brand new technology, so it needs to be accepted that things might run a little bit janky at first and kinks can be ironed out down the road. Either way, we will keep you posted. Tesla will raise the price of the full self-driving suite by $2,000 on January 17th, bringing the price to $12,000 in the United States. Or at least that's according to an Elon Musk tweet on January 7th, not an official company announcement, but same difference, I guess. This is the first price increase to FSD since October 2020, when the upgrade went from 8K to 10 grand US. As far as we know right now, this does not affect the subscription-based pricing of $99 per month, but Elon says subscription price will rise when FSD beta goes to wide release. Elon also specified that the price increase is only for US customers, and he added, quote, FSD price will rise as we get closer to FSD production code release. In a recent interview with the Lex Friedman podcast, Elon Musk said that Tesla could reach level four autonomy by the end of 2022. Full self-driving, even the beta version, is currently at level two autonomy. That means the car will control steering, acceleration, and braking in most situations, but still requires constant human supervision and may demand human intervention at any time. Getting to level four autonomy would mean that the car can perform all controls at all times with no need for monitoring or interventions, but would still allow the human to take control at any time the person chooses. At level five, the car is actually in control at all times, and the human can request to take over manual driving, but does not have full override from the autonomous system. So in level five, you can't just grab the wheel and disengage autopilot. It gets to decide whether or not to relinquish control of the vehicle to you, which is a little bit freaky. Probably fine for a robo taxi, but wouldn't want level five autonomy in my own personal vehicle. A quick update from Starbase, Texas, the building and launch site of the SpaceX Starship rocket. We've recently seen the first test of the robotic lift and catch arms on the launch tower known as Mechazilla. In a couple of different time-lapse videos, we can see the giant metal arms moving up and down along the tower structure. We see them opening and closing in their chopstick maneuver, and we can even see the assembly moving horizontally to the side position it will use to both pick up rocket stages and catch them out of the air. We also got this really cool drone video on January 9th that flies slowly away from Mechazilla and really illustrates how this massive structure towers over the landscape around Boca Chica. It's not much, but since we know now that these rockets won't be launching until March at the very earliest, we just have to take what we can get. Tesla is officially rolling out the Plaid track mode to all Model S Plaid vehicles across North America this week. This is pretty similar to the track mode on the Model 3 Performance that was released in 2018 and then upgraded to V2 in 2020. The Plaid track mode gives the driver individual customization of everything from the stability control, handling, balance, and regenerative braking. The first thing that Plaid track mode does when activated is optimize powertrain cooling, that means drop the temperature of the battery pack and motors to create a significant amount of chilled thermal mass. 
Once track driving begins and heat is generated, shared coolant loops between the battery and motors keep the entire system cooler for longer. The second change in track mode is called lateral torque vectoring. With track mode activated, Plaid automatically adjusts torque split across the rear wheels independently, which applies a torque bias to rotate the car through turns. This increases turn-in response, improves on-center steering feel, and delivers even greater yaw control throughout a corner. Next, this mode unlocks adjustable vehicle dynamics. With Plaid track mode engaged, Tesla Vehicle Dynamics Controller evaluates steering angle, accelerator, and brake pedal inputs to determine where the driver wants to place the car and will permit tire slippage and automatically adjust torque split to give the driver even more authority and improved agility during high-speed cornering. When Plaid Track Mode is engaged, the adaptive suspension damping is now optimized for track handling. Reduced pitch during hard braking and fast acceleration, rebalanced damping to improve responsiveness, and faster settling of vehicle disturbance over bumpy segments to increase driver confidence. To facilitate consistent dynamic driving, ride height is set to low, and the suspension will no longer automatically raise to improve comfort. And lastly, Tesla has added a track-focused user interface to provide critical performance data, including a vehicle thermals monitor, lap timer, G-meter, dash cam video capture, and vehicle telemetry, along with several other customizable options. So in short, this takes all of the advanced stability features that try and prevent you from crashing and dials them back, while at the same time, it uses the car's technology to ramp up the aggression of the handling, braking, and acceleration. Use with caution, for sure. Our old friends Nikola are back in the news again, this time for dropping their $2 billion patent lawsuit against Tesla for their semi-truck design. Nikola alleged that Tesla's electric truck design infringes on its existing design patents for an old truck prototype it unveiled in 2016. The patents are about simple design features like a mid-entry door, the general shape of the fuselage, and the windshield wrapping around the cabin, which is comical because both the Tesla and Nikola trucks just look like smoother, more pointy versions of a regular old transport truck. There's obviously nothing special about either of them. Over the last year, Nikola has run into a lot of other issues unrelated to Tesla, such as getting caught faking a truck demo by rolling it down a hill and telling people it was driving, or having CEO and founder Trevor Milton officially charged with three counts of criminal fraud. And even with all of that going on, it still took until January 5th, 2022, for the company to decide they have more important things to worry about than trying to milk $2 billion out of Tesla with a patent trolling lawsuit. It's really only worth mentioning for the sake of having a couple of laughs at Nikola's expense. It's been a while since we've had the chance. Literally, the only winners here are the lawyers. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.